in a plant there are many parts which can be used as food so before going to that let us see what are the different parts of a plant so you can see in the picture this plant you can observe many parts are there in the plant the first part which you can observe here that is flower again you can observe here there is a branch and if you see the next side you can find fruit and here nodes inner node a leaf stem primary root and secondary root so on the topmost part or sometimes on the topmost part you will be able to find a flower or on the lateral side also we can find the position of the flower and then there is fruit then you can listen here there is a word called a node what is actually node means node is a place from where a leaf originates okay the starting place of a leaf is called a node and in between node two nodes you can find there is some space and this space present between two node this is one node and here there is another node and you can observe from the node only always the leaves arises the space present between two node is known as inner node what is it called inner node then you can find the leaves are originating from every nodes when we come to the lower part of this plant you can find there is a main root and this main root is known as the primary root this root is known as the primary root again you can find some branches of the main root is also available and this branches arising from the main root is known as secondary root okay the main root is called primary root and the branches arising from the main root is known as secondary root then now let us see some of the parts in a plant we can find we are using different types of plants as food but all the part of the plant they cannot be used to buy us as, as a food so the part of the plant which can be eaten as food are known as edible food we can say okay the part of the plant which can be eaten are called as edible the term let me write here edible the part of the plant which can be eaten are called as edible part or edible so let us see what are the different edible parts of a plant so first of all we will see about the fruit you all are very familiar with the fruit different types of fruits mango orange apple grapes and so on you can find there are so many fruits daily we are using and one of the example two examples are given here one is orange the next one is mango and you can add many more okay the next in some plants we are using the stem also we can use stem of some plants as our food example sugar cane asparagus sugar cane you all are very much familiar with the sugar cane but you may have some doubt about asparagus actually asparagus is a plant which is available in the forest area it is a climber and mainly these asparagus plants leaves we are used for making floral decoration in autumn time we are using it i think you got some idea about it then now the another part a root also can be used as a food item in plants like tapioca and carrot we can find the root system is storing the food item the roots of the tapioca plant and carrot stores the food and these two can be eaten as food for us okay so root the edible part tapioca stores its food in their root carrot also stores the food in their root so tapioca and carrot they are storing the grains in their root which can be used 
used by us as food. In some plants you can find flowers also store the food and the flowers, example for such flowers which are storing food that is cauliflower and broccoli. You are all familiar with that uh, sometimes we may cook the food uh, from drumstick, drumstick flowers we may be cooking in our home. Your parents may be cooking that uh, drumstick flowers and even pumpkin flower also can be uh, cooked as a food item. So here two examples are given for you. One is cauliflower, another one is broccoli. Then next, leaves are also used as food. Okay, in some plants, leaves also you can use as food. Example, cabbage. Cabbage, cabbage you are very familiar. I don't want to explain much. Then spinach, that's also a leafy vegetable. And apart from cabbage and spinach, we are using drumstick leaves as a leafy vegetable. And we are using amaranthus, amaranthus, cabbage, spinach, drumstick leaves, etc. We are using as a leafy vegetable. And you can observe some plants, the few parts we are able to eat or few parts we can use as food. For example, in banana plant, you can find the banana fruit we are able to eat. At the same time, Inside the banana there is a swollen portion is there inside the stem that can be used for making curry or it can we can even make juice with that. Okay, so some of the parts. And if we come to jackfruit, you know that we all are familiar with the jackfruit. The jackfruits almost all the parts we are used for making our food item. It's fruits, number of fruits are there. At the same time, inside the fruit, seeds are there. The seeds can be made curry and the fruits can be eaten raw or cooked. Again, it's outer covering. That also we can make uh, different types of, as a part of uh, uh, many chocolates, the outer covering of that uh, jackfruit plant, we are using it. And even the leaves of jackfruit plant, we are giving for goat or sheep, we are giving as a food. And there is no wonder, even some areas, people are making this jackfruit leaves, they are making it as a leafy vegetable, some areas. Okay, and one more specialty is for jackfruit, it is the biggest fruit in India. You know that? The biggest fruit in India is jackfruit. Okay. Then when we see about the mustard plant, you can find, there are two main parts are used in mustard plant. In mustard, the seeds which we have used in our curries, that seeds are responsible for producing oil. From the mustard seeds, we can extract oil. At the same time, in the North Indian world, the people are using the leaves of mustard plant as a leafy vegetable also. Okay. So when we see, there are many plants in our surroundings and there are many parts we are using. If one single plant, all the parts we may not be able to use, but many parts can be used as food. So from this, I hope that you got some idea, what are edible items. Edible item means the food items which can be eaten are known as edible foods. Okay students, now let us see another activity and this activity you have to collect some amount of moong seeds or chenna seeds. Do you know what is meant by moong? Moong seeds or chenna seeds. Moong is nothing but it is green gram seeds. Okay. You are familiar with the green gram. The same green gram only here it is mentioned as moong. Again here chenna is written. Chenna is nothing but that is red gram. Or while for making putta and kadala curry we are making kadala. At that same kadala only we are using here the term as chana. So you may collect some amount of moon seeds or chana seeds. Then soak it in water for one day. One full day you have to keep this moon seed or chana seed in water. Then the next day you have to drain the water. Okay. First you have to collect some moon seeds or chana seeds. Uh, next step, you have to soak it in water. What is by soaking? 
In order to make it soft, we are keeping it in water. That process is known as soaking. And after soaking, this seeds in water for one day. Next day, you have to drain the water. Drain the water means remove the water. When you place the seeds in water, this water should be removed on the next day. And that is called draining. Drain the water. Then afterwards, after removing the water, we will get the seeds. The seeds should be placed in a cloth and wrap it tightly. Then keep it for one more day. Then the next day, you just observe from the seeds, you can observe some white structures are coming outside or some white structures are growing out of the seed. And if these white structures are coming out of the seed, we can say that seeds have sprouted. The seeds have sprouted. So you can see the word here, sprouted. Sprout means to germinate. Okay. The, you know, the, when the seeds are getting uh, sufficient uh, requirements, they will keep germinating. So here we have provided with water. The seeds you have provided with water. The next day we can find a small seedling is coming out of it. A white portion you can see. And this white part which comes out from the seed that is called a sprout and if this sprout has come out we can say the seeds have already sprouted or sprouted sprouting we can also call it as germination you can say so germinated seeds let me say once again this first of all you have to collect some seeds what type of seeds moon seeds or chana seeds then soak it in water for one day next day you have to Drain the water. Drain the water means remove the water. Then what to do? You have to keep these soaked seeds in a cloth and wrap it tightly and leave it for one more day. And the following day, you just remove the wrapper and observe. You may be able to find out the white structures which are coming outside. And if the white structures are coming outside, then we can say, it is already sprouted and suppose if the sprouts are not coming outside, again soak it in water for one more day, then wait for one more day. The next day definitely you will be able to see the sprouts. Okay. And these sprouted seeds now, you can eat it as a raw food item. Okay. These sprouted seeds, it is very nutritious, it is highly proteinaceous and it can be used as a snack at the evening time. Or you may even cook it also. Okay, you can eat it by cooking or you may even eat it in a raw form also. This activity, you can do it in your home also. It is very delicious as well as nutritious diet for growing children like you. So ask your parents to make it as a part of your daily diet. Okay, now let us see the continuation of the animal products as food. Here are some examples of animal food are given. One is milk, next one is meat, then egg and honey. What are the animal products as food? Milk, meat, egg and honey. And we will see what are the sources of these animal products. Milk we are getting mainly from many animals. Almost all of us are depending on cow for our milk need and goat also provide us milk then buffaloes are also providing us milk okay so the sources of milk are cow goat buffalo so these are the commonly available sources for milk for us but in some states especially in Rajasthan and all there are large number of camels are available the people in that particular area they used to collect camels milk also and make it as a part of their food okay then now let us see what is the source of meat meat main source we are depending on buffaloes and pig then fish hen duck etc there are so many animals are so many birds as well as animals are there which provide us meat then now we will see about egg the most commonly available bird which provide us egg is 
candle. But in some people's house, we can see duck also, especially in that uh, riverside and all, almost all the people, they will grow duck. And uh, duck also provide us egg, then turkey and quail. Quail is also producing egg. Do you know what is by quail? Quail is a small bird and that uh, when we grow the quail, 40th day onwards they start laying egg. And you know that it's a small bird and it's of two different colors. Sometimes uh, white colored quail is also available. I think you all are familiar with that quail. So what are the sources of egg? Hen, duck, turkey and quail. Then next we will see about honey. So as children you all are very much interested to have honey. Okay. And how this honey we are getting? Actually this honey is produced by an insect that is called honey bee. So you all are familiar. There are two types of honey bees we can see. Some small sized honey bees are there and some large sized honey bees are also there. Whether it is a small size or large size they are doing the same work. They used to collect the nectar from different flowers and they will convert it into honey and store in their bee hives. Actually they are storing it for their purpose but we people, human beings, we are collecting it and using it as our own source of food. And this honey can be used as a food at the same time. It can also be used as a medicine. It has medicinal value also. It is acting as an antiseptic. It can act as an antiseptic. So for that purpose, it will boost our immunity power. Okay. You might have heard that in YouTube and all there are so many channels that they used to give us instructions. Honey along with the lemon in early morning if we have it, it will boost our disease resistance capacity. Okay. In order to boost our immunity power, honey is a very good source. So, these honeybees are collecting nectar from the flowers and convert it into honey and store it in their hives. You know that flowers are available for us only for a short period of time. A part of the year, the flowers are available for us, a particular season. Then afterwards, the flowers will not be available for us. But during this time, during off season also, honey will be made available for us by a very useful insect that is honeybees. Okay. Yes, friends. This is the last topic of our chapter. What do animals eat? You know that in your home, many pet animals may be there, like cat, dog, even parrot. At the same time, milk giving animals like cow, goat, etc. You know what is the food habit of those animals? You all are familiar with them. But there are some other animals also in our surroundings, like pigeon, squirrel, small insects, lizard, etc. So based on the food habits, based on the nature of the food item they are eating, all the animals in our surroundings can be classified mainly into three groups. They are herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. So based on the nature of the food items they are having, it, they can be classified into herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. So let us see what is the definition for herbivores. Animals which eat only plant and plant products are called herbivores. Okay. Animals which eat only plant and plant products are called herbivorous animal or herbivores. An example for herbivores, cow, goat and sheep. Cow, goat, sheep, parrot, etc. are example for herbivorous organisms. Then we can see the next one that is carnivores. What are carnivores? Carnivores are the animals which eat flesh of other animals. Okay. Animals which eat flesh of other animals are called carnivorous animal or they are also known as carnivores. Example for carnivores, lion, tiger, etc. are example for carnivores. Now let us come to the next point that is omnivores. 
There are a group of animals in our surroundings, including us, who are eating many kinds of food items, especially plant food as well as animal food. So, example for such animals are human beings, crow, bear, and etc. Two examples are given here. You may collect more examples. The animals which eat both plant and animal are called omnivorous animals or they are in short we can call them as omnivores. Okay. So omnivores eat both type of food item. So now let us see what are the new words or important keywords in this chapter. So the first word is edible. The spelling of edible is A D I B L E. Edible. Edible means which can be eaten. The next word is nectar. Nectar already we have discussed. The sweet juice which is present in flower is known as nectar. And the spelling of nectar is N E C T A R. Nectar. The next one is sprouted seeds. Sprouted seeds. The activity of monk seed already you studied. What is sprouting? So the word is sprouted seed. Spelling is S P R O U T E D. Sprouted seeds. Sprouted seeds. The next word is ingredient. Ingredient. The spelling is I N G R E D I E N T. Ingredient. Okay. The next word, because it is mentioned here, I didn't write down. We can listen here. Herbivore. Herbivore spelling is H E R B I V O R E. Herbivore. The next one is carnivore. Spelling of carnivore is C A R N I V O R E. Carnivore. The next spelling is omnivore. The word omnivore. The spelling is O M N I V O R E. Omnivore. So these are the keywords or new words. Let me repeat it once again. Edible, nectar, sprouted seeds, ingredients, herbivores, carnivores and omnivores. With this we have finished this first chapter and you have to read this chapter at least five times in your home and do all the exercise. There are certain charts are there to complete and on bikes of the textbook there are certain question answers are there. All this you have to read well and try to complete all the exercise questions for the next time. When you come to school during the time of reopening you have to submit it to the principal. Okay. Then till the next time we meet. Bye. Take care.